Bienvenidos to our annual Hispanic Heritage Celebration. My name is Pedro Viaggi, I'm from El Sol 107.9, and I'm super excited to be here tonight. I'm very honored to be sharing this evening with you, uh, all important business people, yes, yes, people that care for the community, people that work really hard for places like the Latin American Youth Center, Mary Center, La Clinica del Pueblo, and on and on, those places that really matter for us are the places that I know you guys support with your business. For that, I thank you. Hello? You can applaud yourself, it's nice. Yes. I can hear you, you're excited about it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. We have a big evening planned for you, so please try to stay with us throughout the whole program. Don't quit. First, I would like to thank tonight's main sponsors, PNC. Thank you for hosting us tonight. Goya, que si es Goya, tiene que ser bueno, ¿verdad? Adiós. <laughs> ACSI Translations and Washington Hispanic. Let's give it up for Washington Hispanic, what's up? We have displayed the rest of our sponsors on the screen, and I would also like to recognize our VIPs joining us here today. I would like to acknowledge Antonio Dos, District Director for WMADOSBA. Muchas letras, ¿verdad? Ustedes entienden con sus títulos, ¿no? También queremos eh, reconocer la presencia de Jack Evans, DC Council War II. Jack, are you here? Okay. We'd also like to acknowledge Anna Harvey. Anna, are you here? Yeah! Director of DC DSLBD. ¿Viste? Tú sabes lo que quiere decir todo eso, ¿verdad? Chévere. Victor Hoskins, the director of Arlington Economic Development. We'd also like to acknowledge Nick Majid, Chief Administrative Officer, Prince George County. Hello. Dios mío, muchas letras hay aquí. <laughs> Natalia Olson Urtecho, SBA Mid Atlantic Regional Administrator. Are you here? Yes? <laughs> Monica Palacio. <laughs> Woohoo! DC Office of Human Rights. Where's Monica? Hey, Monica. <laughs> oh, this one I know really well. Her name is Jackie Reyes Ñañez. Director of the Office of the Latino Affairs for the Mayor of Washington, D.C. Hola, Jackie. <laughs> We would also like to acknowledge Frederico Rodriguez, Office of Congressman Chris Van Hollen, Maryland 8th District. There you are. And of course, an example to follow and somebody we are very proud of and we love dearly because of all he does for the community and it's you. Walter Tejada. Hey, my Walter! <laughs> I love you. <laughs> also, we'd like to acknowledge Tatiana Torres, Chief of Staff of the DC General Council. Tatiana, bienvenida. Y una señora salvadoreña en sentía. We all are very proud of her and we love her. And we are always behind her. Her name is Ana Sol Gutierrez. Un aplauso para Ana Sol. ¿Dónde está Ana Sol? We love you. <laughs> and now, I would like to introduce one of our event hosts, Mr. Michael Harold, Regional President of PNC Bank for the Greater Washington Area. Un aplauso que se oiga, señores. Hello, sir. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. I was trying to figure out this afternoon, I believe this is the sixth year that we have sponsored this, and it gets, it's fun. It's just always a fun event, and it's a particularly important event tonight. But I want to tell you how I became involved with this uh, Chamber of Commerce. Back when um, I was young, uh, and Anna Harvey was running this, she was always a mentor and a role model for me. And I thought, when I grow up, I want to make sure that I support all of the things she's She's done so right, so, all right. <laughs> um, 
wow, 600 members, 1,800 people at a business expo, um, a joint venture with Prince George's County about technical support for Hispanic small businesses. Uh, hopefully, uh, Judge Baker will be here later where we can thank him officially. Uh, somebody say yes, that uh, he's on his way. Um, international activities, promoting international activities, including having Latin American companies up here where they can be exposed and we can see what would be mutually beneficial. It's been an incredible year and one in which the board, the staff, Angela, all of you can take great pride. It is no surprise then that when they were looking for an annual Chamber of the Year award uh, that they picked Angela Franco and the Hispanic Chamber here. So heartiest congratulations for that award, that respect. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. And a lot of people, a lot of people in this room and others worked very hard to make that happen. So heartiest congratulations. One of the things we did on this uh, special celebration, we went out uh, to interview a few people and ask them about their relationship, their support, their history with this chamber. So you're going to see a video, which uh, Angela reminded me, everybody say this is not up for a Grammy, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's sort of our homemade video, but it uh, says eloquent things, I think, about uh, how proud we are. On September 21st, the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce was named Chamber of the Year by the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Hola, I'm Rashern Baker, the Prince George's County Executive and proud partner of the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Our Hispanic businesses are a critical part of our county's economy, and we are fortunate that they are represented by the best Hispanic chamber in the nation. On behalf of the nearly 900,000 residents of Prince George's County, I want to congratulate the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on this well-deserved honor. Felicidades. I want to congratulate the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Angela Franco, the board and the staff on winning the uh, Chamber of the Year Award. I, I'm very proud to have been associated with the Chamber for over a decade, so I just wish you the best of luck and keep up the good work. That means shut up. Ooh, no. Escuchame? That means listen to me. Escuchame. Angela, Alfredo, Mario, and the entire team at the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, congratulations on this recognition from the United States Chamber of Commerce. What a wonderful award, so well deserved. The Greater Washington Board of Trade congratulates you, I congratulate you on achieving this award. You do so much for this community. You do wonderful things for the business community. And you do it with an accent and style. Congratulations. Congratulations, Angela, and to all of your staff for the amazing job that you have done to bring the nonprofit sector and the private sector together with one mission, and that is to bring business and to bring joy and to bring the community in this area together. Um, for one cause, and that is to move the Latino community up the economic ladder. Thank you for everything that you have done. Recognition, celebration, education, communications, networking. These are all extraordinarily valuable things for people trying to build businesses or start businesses. And in this large Hispanic community, the Hispanic Chamber has done a terrific job in supporting all of that. So congratulations. I'm very proud to be a part, a supporter, and very proud for the organization to win this award. The Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has been a tremendous, just absolutely tremendous a partner to Arlington Economic Development. In addition, it's been a great partner in the past for me in the District of Columbia. And I'm just so proud of them and that they've won this award that's richly deserved and congratulations to you. I can't believe we're here. I can't believe this great um, award, premio, the chamber has gotten. Angela and your team, you guys have done an excellent job. I want to tell you, I stand right next to you as we continue to move forward with Hispanic business in Washington, D.C. Windmark Construction and your chamber are definitely dedicated to growing the local businesses in D.C. Yeah. I have 
formed a great network of connections thanks to my involvement with the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Congratulations on a well-deserved award. I know how hard Angela and the staff work to make this such a successful organization. We're here to serve you and to help you to grow your business, to be your voice, to make connections, to be successful. Move your business forward and thank you for your support. Um, you heard me talk about earlier about the uh, joint venture between Prince George's County and the Hispanic Chamber to support, nurture, and encourage um, Hispanic businesses, small and medium sized. And with all that's going on in Prince George's County, uh, Judge Baker has been intimately involved in that economic development activity since 2010 when he became County Judge Executive. And so we thank you very much for that support. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you being here and uh, delighted that you would con uh, that consider being a partner and a growing partner with us as we try to build that business. Oh, well, thank you very much. We, we really, can we have a round of applause? I mean, this has been, uh, I, I know I speak on behalf of Prince George's County and our nearly 900,000 uh, residents and 500 square miles. And uh, James Coleman, who is uh, head of our uh, Economic Development Corporation, to say and, uh, that the partnership has been tremendous. Uh, one of the things we talked about when I came into office was making sure every part of Prince George's County got a chance to participate and grow. Uh, considering the fact we're going to do somewhere between seven to, to, to eight billion dollars worth of development over the next three years. So having that uh, partnership being able to do uh, the fastest growing segment of our population are, are Latinos and the fastest growing business part of Prince George's County are Latino businesses. So this has been a great partnership and I want to thank you and it's great for us. We look forward to many, many, many more years of uh, working together. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the city, we have a council member Jack Evans, who represents the second district. And Jack, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Mike, and uh, good evening, everyone. Good Welcome to Ward 2. We are right in the center of my ward in the District of Columbia, and I want to make sure everybody feels welcome here, and I want to first take this opportunity uh, to thank Mike Harold and uh, PNC Bank for hosting us. Mike's been a great uh, citizen of the District of Columbia, contributing enormously not only to our city but our region as has this bank. Give him a big round of applause. Mike, thank you. And I'm thrilled to be joined by my good friend, Sean Baker, the uh, Prince George's County County Executive. Uh, we've worked on a lot of projects together uh, over the years and uh, between the county and the city, uh, economic development is taking enormous strides, producing jobs for many, many of our residents in both areas. And so, Rashawn, thank you for being here and being so supportive over the years. Absolutely. Give him another round of applause. And I want to uh, also recognize a good friend of mine, Jay Haddock. Where's Jay? Back over here. He's on the Convention and Sports Authority and uh, has done a great job uh, for our city with a hotel and, uh, and really uh, bringing, again, a lot of economic development to our city. Uh, most recently with the new Wizards practice facility, which is going to be located in Ward 8. So, Jay, thank you for all you've done as well. And I want to thank all of you for being out here today. Um, as many of you know, I've been on the council for 25 years. So it's seen a long... <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jay. <laughs> I've seen the, move, the whole movie of the city. Uh, from 1991, when the city was struggling, to 1995, when we were really struggling uh, so badly, we had a control board in place. Uh, to the 19, late 1990s with uh, Mayor Williams, Linda Kropp, myself, Nat Gandhi, uh, trying to resurrect the finances of our city. Uh, fast forwarding all, to, all towards today, where without a doubt, the District of Columbia is the most dynamic city in America. Uh, our bond, yes, thank you. <laughs> our bond ratings have gone from junk bond status to AAA status. Uh, development across the city uh, is unparalleled. And we have a lot to be thankful for what's happening here. Now, it doesn't mean we don't still struggle with some of the urban problems that most cities have. A school system that continues to not deliver the quality education that we want, but it's getting better all the time. And uh, affordability in our city, as it prospers, many people struggle with our city trying to stay here. And so the new mayor, myself, and others have worked very hard 
to put hundreds of millions of dollars into affordable housing in our city. And then finally into the area you're talking about here today is business. I just spoke to a business group yesterday at lunch and said the district goes out of its way to make your life difficult. That's what we do. We throw up roadblocks all the time to make it hard to do business in the city. But we're changing, and I say that's in jest but also in seriousness. We are changing because what we are trying to do is make it easy for business to thrive here. Because what? 75% of America works for small business. And that's what we're trying to do. Make an environment so businesses can thrive in the District of Columbia, hire our residents, and really, really make this a great place for everybody to live and work. So in the Latino community, I've always been very supportive from my early days as an ANC commissioner on 17th Street. Uh, where one of the first places that I used to hold meetings was at La Fonda restaurant. Anybody remember La Fonda? Yes, absolutely. And Adelina Callahan, Adelina Pena, Adelina Callahan uh, was one of my earliest supporters. And from then on, we went forward and have really created an environment in this city that has really worked. So I have with me today a politician never comes empty-handed. You came empty-handed. You have to come empty-handed. I brought a ceremonial resolution that was passed unanimously by the Council of the District of Columbia. Now that's something, right? Give a round of applause for that. I tell you, if anybody ever saw us on Channel 13, you know what a, what a feat that is to get a unanimous vote. So I'm not going to read all the whereas's, but I'm going to read some of them, so bear with me here. I'm good, I get my glasses on. No, that's what happens when you're on the Council 25 years. You can't see. Okay, the resolution is as follows. It rec to recognize and celebrate the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in the celebration of the Hispanic heritage. Starts out as follows. Whereas the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce was founded in 1976. And whereas the Chamber, a membership-driven organization, supports the economic development of the Greater Washington metropolitan area by facilitating the success of Latino and other minority-owned businesses. Every year, more than 1,500 businesses and organizations participate in many events. The members range from Washington, the Washington region's largest corporations to one-person companies and everything in between. It goes on and recognizes the many achievements of the organization and concludes as follows. The Council of the District of Columbia commends the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for its many contributions to the District of Columbia and her citizens and I, Jack Evans, by the power invested in me, do hereby declare today, October 1st, as Hispanic Heritage Day in the District of Columbia. Congratulations. So here, come over here. Thank you so much. So what that means is everybody can park for free I for the rest of the day. Is. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, to inaugurate this is Small Biz Mentorship Program, we would like to invite Jackie Reyes, Director of the Mayor's Office on Latino Affairs. Jackie Reyes. Un aplauso que se oiga, señores. Buenas tardes. Okay, Pedro, I think that we need to, this is our third time together this week. Yes. Working we have overtime. been working overtime. We're working him overtime. Gracias, Pedro, por siempre apoyarnos. Pero también gracias a mi amiga, a nuestra amiga, fiel amiga Angela Franco, por ese tu reconocimiento. I know firsthand how hard you work to put a Latino name, not only DC, but national. So thank you. Aplauso, por favor. Se lo merece. Y a todo tu equipo. Aquí está César, Pamela, y a todos los del Barbara Chamber, uh, the Barbara Chamber, <laughs> the Hispanic Chamber. Por favor, levanten su mano por ese gran trabajo y todas esas llamadas que, que nos dan y nos mantienen siempre en nuestros tiptoes, como se dice. Pero gracias. Bueno, estoy aquí. Mi nombre es Jackie Reyes y soy la directora de Asuntos Latinos para la alcaldesa Muriel Bowser, la primera salvadoreña en 40 años. Aplauso. Pero ahora soy colombiana. 
<ríe> me regalaron un pin colombiano. So ahora estoy representando a la comunidad colombiana. ¿Ah? No, y también mis hijos son colombianos. Y tenemos en nuestro, en nuestro gabinete, tenemos a Colombia, México, y, tam, y también te, estamos bien representados en, la, en, el, en el gabinete de la alcaldesa Muriel Bowser. Pero estoy acá para presentar nuestro programa de mentorship. Ustedes han sabido cómo la alcaldesa Muriel Bowser habla acerca de mentors. Y mentors, y mentors, y mentors, y mentors. And I think that mentorship is the path to the middle class that Mayor Bowser has been coming in and talking about the fresh start. And when we first talked to about with Angela about this, she bite in into the idea. And she said, Jackie, what do we have to do? What do we have to do for this to make it work? So we have, we are enjoying the wealth of the hard work of the Latino community in here. And, the, and you know, we all know that in the United States, the backbone of the prosperity of the United States, we are good for business, right? Yeah. I think we should say that out loud. Latinos, we are good for business. I want to hear it. Somos buenos o no somos buenos? How much, how much do we bring to the table, Angela? What, in the United States? In the United States? Over 50 million. 50 million. Yeah, and we bring into the table like, like three trillion dollars? on business, I think that that's what the last account. So I was like, oh my God, we are good for business. So cada vez que vea un Latino caminando, you tell him, you are good for business, okay? <laughs> well, we wanna make sure when we sat down with Angela at my first, first month, she brought in, uh, she came into my office and said, Jackie, ¿qué vamos a hacer para ayudar a las personas a esos pequeños negocios that have not been that fortune? And you know, thinking about fresh ideas. We say, why don't we start this program, a mentoring program? And she came back, and I guess she came back to her team, and she put up together, or her team, to brainstorm on how they're gonna do it, because you know I'm good to come out with ideas. But then we have our partners that they make those ideas come alive, like Angela and Tim. And I think that she came on with Gabriela Roboyo, que esta por acá? the Vice President of Beyond and Excellent. So thank you for, for your support on creating the structure for the mentoring program. Gracias. Un aplauso para ella, por favor, pero que se sienta. So how is this gonna work? So we came on and looked for these successful business that are in the District of Columbia, such as Keystone Construction, ¿A dónde está Carlos Perdomo? Por favor, levante la mano. And a board member, otra vez, doble aplauso. <laughs> so they came on board and they're gonna do is, they have been steady and, and being so successful that they're gonna mentor emerging, uh, like a home improvement, and they're gonna shadow them to do the work plan and we are pit, uh, pitching in because we cannot do this by ourselves to our friends and small businesses. Anita, gracias. Por, por la ayuda también. So they're gonna come and, sh and, and work them and meet with them once a month to make sure that they have all the paperwork that they need, that they are registered with as a small business disadvantage with our department, uh, with Anita Harvey, so we can get those good contracts in the government, right? ¿Quién quiere contrato del gobierno? Regístrense con la, nuestra directora aquí. <laughs> ¿Pueden aplaudir? ¿Pueden aplaudir? <laughs> so they will meet for two, almost for two hours, and they will go over their, their challenges or whatever they need to do as a mentors, and they will have the opportunity to discuss all of the states of the businesses are going on, the strengths, the weaknesses, and they, that's what they will do, that's what mentors do. They went through a rigorous, strict eligibility, they have to be DC residents, okay? This is a pilot program for five different ones. So I would like to also mention the other ones, Margarita Diloni, una de World One también, va a ser una de las mentors. Aplauso para ella también. Luis, Clave, Luis Clavijo, the MT Bank. 
y quién más y quién otra más que you know she does what she preach our own very own Angela Franco is going to be a mentor So our mentees, if you can come up, please. Todos los, nuestros mentors and mentees, ¿se pueden pasar para enfrente? Carlos. Luis Clavijo. Y nuestros mentees que serán Steven Rodriguez, Ricardo Villalba. And I would like to say that one of the things that Mayor Bowser always says, si ustedes prosperan, Toda la ciudad de Washington DC va a prosperar. Así que estamos con ustedes aquí para trabajar juntos. Así es que, thank you y mil gracias. Y remember, we are good for business. business. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. 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 And now, to present the Legacy Award and also to introduce the Chairman's Award, let's please welcome Eso, mira cómo vienen. <laughs> Chambers, <laughs> Chambers Chairman Alfredo Casa and its President, la hermosísima, poderosa, conocida y querida Angela Franco. Oh, Eso, aplaudan a la señora. Gracias, 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 gracias no. Pedro, que siempre está encendido. Epa. ¿Sí o no? <laughs> bueno, but today, um, you know, it is a special night for us and as the chamber as we celebrate Hispanic heritage and uh, we're going to recognize we're going to have a legacy award and a chairman's award and I just want to start with the legacy award and this is very special to me personally and to this organization uh, because it has been I didn't even them I didn't want them to write anything because I wanted it to come from my heart Walter but really, Walter Tejada has been a champion for this organization. And if you haven't had the chance to work with him or to meet him, take the opportunity to do, to do, it, to do so tonight. He has been in the council of Arlington County for 13 years. And uh, the program that we have of uh, capacity building was built thanks to him. And I saw him fighting for funding I lived the times when they wanted to, you know, we, we were not like sure if it was going to move forward or not. And he was a champion for us. And for me personally, he believed in me. And I cannot thank you for that, Walter. And I hope that this recognition stays with you and helps you with your future career. I know you're gonna move forward. And this is a way on my behalf and on behalf of the board of directors, our staff that loves you, and the members and the numerous companies that have been helped through the program in Arlington County. We have helped in the last 11 years over 12,000 businesses here. Think about it. 12,000 businesses. We do wonderful, and I know Tara Palacios and Lourdes Huayzara, you're right here. Tweeting. Tweeting. <laughs> Tara, they tweet all the time. Anyway, Tara, with Tara's support and Lourdes' support, and now that Victor Hoskins is there, we, I, I don't even have words because this, that program is like the, like when you have a little boy, is that little seed, and you help them grow and you build it and you give them the strength and the structure, and that's where everything starts, Walter. So. For us in this organization, this is such a special recognition. We have done it once, and it is for you. The Legacy Award to our, like I always say, Nuestro Walter Tejada. Buenas noches. <laughs> I um, I'm very moved, and it's a to say that it's an honor and a privilege. It will be uh, an understatement to receive this 
recognition. Um, Angela, your words are very meaningful, and I, I got it. I can't thank you enough. Very, uh, very nice introduction. Very well uh, said, and I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and and I want to just. Uh, I know that everybody's been standing here for a while, so I only have a one-hour speech. Uh, <laughs> no, I know there's some good food waiting, but but I did. <laughs> yeah, no tengo que portarme bien porque está mi mamá aquí. I uh, I've been. Uh, uh, privileged to be joined uh, by uh, two of my my two favorite ladies that uh, if it were not for them uh, to give me permission que me den permiso para hacer algo las cosas if they weren't allow me to uh, get involved I wouldn't be able to do it as uh, as, as uh, with uh, with as much flexibility so uh, my wife Robin Lighton Tejada who's here <laughs> and and my mom Ruth Bolaños <laughs> So I'm very inspired by, by their presence uh, here. And uh, you know, I, as I um, go into my remarks now, I would tell you that um, you know, the United States is a land of opportunity. We hear that all the time. And how exa what exactly does that mean? How do we realize that? How do we actually make it happen to be so? Well, they, it says you have to have power. Well, eh, let's, talk, let's think about that, power. What, what does power mean? We got Political power, right? We have the power of religion. We have the power of the courts, the judicial system. We have the power of football, soccer. <laughs> That's another power. And then there's something called economic power. So that's a philosophical way of looking at things in general. How do you actually make those things happen? And how can we, in the piece of rock that we may have settled in, in our area, in our home, in our neighborhood, in our county, can make something like that come to life. And, and some of us uh, are aspirational. We like to think we can change the world, make it better. You know, that's our whole uh, uh, inspiration in life to, to do that. But we also realize that we cannot do it alone. This has to be a team effort. And to me, as I was, uh, considered running for elected office and a number of people supported me along the way. In my first election, actually, I won by 29 votes. Thousands and thousands of people voted. I won by 29 votes. So uh, people say, well, those new people voted. Well, those new people were people that looked a lot like this crowd in here. And, and so that I had the honor and privilege to, to, to begin serving in elected office. But one of the things I wanted to do is to make sure that Latino uh, uh, in general, whether people who wanted to start a business, or people who had a business and needed to strengthen it, or people who uh, needed to even go a higher step, could do better. And I wanted to know how to do it. But frankly, I, I really didn't have the know-how. But it's one of my uh, desires that I wanted to do. And so there was a guy, uh, and, you know, I had been in contact already with then uh, an organization, then known as the Ibero-American Chamber of Commerce. La Cámara de Comercio Iberoamericana. Remember that? How many of you remember that? Right? <laughs> yeah. So there was some guy named Juan Albert. Anybody remember Juan Albert? Yes. yes. Great guy. Great guy. And he was one of the presidents of the then Iberoamerican Chamber of Commerce. So he and I got together and I said, look, could you help me out? Could you help me propose an idea that some people are going to find it strange, but, you know, hey, hey, you know, we got to try it. And, and they had already been thinking about doing that anyway. And so it says, now that we know that you can we do it? And I said, well, I don't know if you can, but let's try it. So we went and met with the then director of economic development, Adam Wasserman. You remember Tara, right? And, and, and he was, what? That has never been done before. I don't know if we could do that, but let's try it. So there was an openness to try. And the, the, the try was that while I am very proud to live in Arlington County, which is an inclusive county, it tries to be inclusive, tries to be a caring county where everybody we feel is important. There are also, and people have good intentions, but unless you specifically sh show the example, then it, it really might not happen. And so they say, well, how do we make it happen? We need to have the expertise, the bilingual, 
and bicultural understanding of how to outreach to the community, how to encourage those who want to start a business, who to, to, to learn what the steps are to start a business, and then how to continue the trajectory to improve your business. And that can be done with good intentions, but if you don't, if you're not able to communicate directly, biculturally and bilingually to the uh, customers, then uh, and the people want to start, then you might lose an opportunity for a great entrepreneurship uh, to take place. And so does then began an openness to let's try and see, let's just see if it can work, even though there was, quite frankly, opposition. But I have to work the political angle <laughs> and I have to try to make it happen. To make a long story short, we began a partnership with someone from the then Ibero-American Chamber of Commerce, later known as the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, began to have a seat right at the Office of Economic Development, Arlington's Office of Economic Development. And so then began a partnership with Tara Palacios um, and others were part of, and then began the, uh, the efforts. And there was something created called Biz Lunch. Now this was originally started as an effort to uh, support affordable housing, but it quickly evolved into what turned into an assistance program for budding entrepreneurs. And thus began a series of workshops and uh, the presentations that were in English and then in Spanish. You know, we're Arlington County, so hey, we pr pr presented in Spanish, and those who need a translation, we have uh, devices sometimes for them, or you know, say, hey, come back to the one that we do in English. So we began to do that, and I was a little, at the time, it wasn't really, you know, people were a little skeptical. What, should, should this be happening? Should we use taxpayer dollars for this or not? And I, personally, my personal opinion was, yeah, we should. <laughs> yes, we should, because eventually, if someone starts a business and, and is able to sustain a business and makes money, not only are they improving their quality of life for themselves, their family, they're paying taxes to the locality, which then provides all the good things that we then take for granted that we have in a community. And frankly, uh, here's a little plug for, for Arlington. Victor, Victor, are you here? Victor Hodgins, our economic development director. I think he left. But Tara's here. Arlington County is, uh, uh, has the, our public school system is in the top 1% in the country. We have a record low crime, the record lowest since 1960. We have a triple, triple A bind rating. Very proudly to tell you this, every single year that I've been in elected office, we have for 15 years in a row, we have a triple, triple A bond rating. We're a good place to do business uh, in. We are, we're the home of 1776, Boeing and the National Headquarters, right there at where the Eastern Headquarters uh, and, uh, that we have. We have a, a number of multitude of other businesses that we're moving forward. So we are a, a great place, a great destination for business. So if you're here, since Victor left, Tara, can you raise your hand? See Tara Palacio. We are open for business in Arlington County for sure. So with all these great things happening in Arlington County, yet, you know, there's still a need to do even better, making sure that everybody shares in the prosperity, that there is the real opportunity for people that sometimes they don't have a voice, and making sure that we create the environment in which they can succeed. And thank goodness for the partnership that uh, Arlington Economic Development's office, the, the county government in general, and yes, you had to be a little political muscle that we had to uh, put there to make it happen, right? Because it didn't happen by accident. But uh, that, I'm very proud that uh, there was a partnership that accepted that we move forward with that effort. So I want to say that uh, there could not have been, Angela, a greater partner than the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And the interesting thing, thing is now that uh, the, the chamber's going strong. And I always tell people, this is a camera seria. I can You know, this is a, a, a very um, a determined uh, chamber, and uh, everyone needs to support one another and make it a stronger one. There were times where it might not happen. You know, it was up in the air whether the funding was there, whether, you know, so we had to fight a little bit to make it happen. And so, uh, and then it had to be, and the way to show that it could be done is by someone jumping in and making sure that happens. So all of you who serve in the board of directors of the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, whether you serve now or you have served uh, before, can you raise your hand? Raise your hands if you're here. Those who served before, don't be shy. Raise your hand or serve now or serve before. Let's give them a warm hand because they've done a fabulous, fabulous job. In and so we needed to have a strong partner and get it, get the job done. And under, most recently, under Angela Franco's leadership, and everyone who's been on the board with Alfredo now and everybody else on the board, this this chamber has proven that things can be done and can be done well. Los Latinos estamos aquí para hacer plata, verdad? O para invertir y para salir adelante. Because really, when you think about 57 million Latinos around this country, right? probably the, large, the largest Latino uh, country in the world. 
we have about almost 25 eligible voters in the United States, Latino eligible voters, almost 25 million out of only, only 11 million voters the last presidential election. So let me tell you, the road to the White House goes to the Latino vote and to the Latino economic power because we will be supporting candidates that are friendly to our community and not those that are denigrating our community. So we are here to fight for our uh, respectability and we're not gonna do it because we think we're nice. We're gonna try to be nice and we're gonna be some, doing some salsa, some cumbia and all that along the way. But make no mistake about it, we're here to engage in political empowerment, economic empowerment and making sure that our community is respected and be given the, uh, uh, the inclusion that we not I have, I have, we don't, we're not saying for a free hand, we have earned it. So I look forward to continuing to work with everyone connected with the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I am so honored to receive this legacy award and on behalf of a multitude of people that have benefited from all the work that the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has done. Muchisimas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. So I, um, so Franklin Garcia, U.S. Representative, thank you for being here, and Denny Taveras, from a councilwoman in Prince George's County. Thank you, Denny. So now would, I'm gonna introduce you to the chairman of our board. I don't know if you have met him, maybe you have Alfredo Casta. Um, he's gonna present the chairman's award. He's uh, the president and CEO of Cascade Technologies that is one of the top 500 fastest growing Hispanic companies in the U.S. Did I say that correctly? Yes. And we're very proud to have him on board. And before, I also want to introduce Daisy Avelar. She's the Hispanic liaison for the county executive in Prince George's County. Thank you all so much for being here. All right. So before I get started, I want to uh, thank a few folks. Uh, I want to thank the staff, Pamela, Alma, Linda, Cesar. A big round of applause for the staff. They're the ones that make this happen each and every year and each and every time. Um, I, I, Walter, I, I also have to behave tonight because I also want to thank my parents because they're here tonight as well. So big round of applause to my parents. And whoever turned on the AC, thank you as well because it feels much better now. All right, so last week I was studying with my daughter um, for her civics exam. And the topic was the fundamentals of the American democracy it covered what the duties were as a citizen under the Constitution, and that is to obey the law, to serve in the armed forces, to serve as a juror, to attend school, and to, yes, pay our taxes. But what I liked about reviewing this with my daughter was that it also covered the personal traits that as good citizens we should all have under the Constitution, and that is to be trustworthy and honest, respect the rights of others, be responsible, accountable, and self-reliance. Respect the law, be patriotic, and always be concerned about the welfare of our community. Folks, this year's Chairman Award goes to the Reyes family because they embody those traits. They came to Washington, D.C., like thousands of Salvadorians in the 80s, with a vision to establish themselves here in the district. 32 years later, El Tamarindo has not only been a restaurant, has been a community supporter, is one of the first to introduce the Central American cuisine to the district and a place that many of us go and feel like home. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Chairman Award goes to El Tamarindo and the Reyes family. Let me start off by saying if I speak Spanglish, I hope everybody understands. I'm second generation, so. <laughs> okay. There you um, go. El Tamarindo was established in 1982 by my lovely parents, Jose and Betty Reyes. Uh, I don't think that in 1982, a Hispanic Heritage Month celebration looked anything like this. I don't think Latinos had the opportunities that they have now. I don't think we had organizations such as the Chamber, such as, uh, or leaders such as Anna Harvey, Maria Gomez, uh, bringing our community forward. 
So it's really truly an honor for us as El Tamarindo, as the Reyes family to be honored um, in a celebration such as this where we're celebrating the foundation um, that Latinos have, that Latino, uh, the community has uh, put for us um, and opened up so many doors so that we can achieve uh, and have the same opportunities as anybody else as Americans. So this is truly uh, a humbling uh, award. Very happy to be here. Um, thank you to my parents that set the foundation for what I have the opportunity to build on now. <laughs> my father is a character in case he's never. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. El Tamarindo is uh, very honored. Uh, the Reyes family is very honored and we look forward to continue serving the community and I guarantee you El Tamarindo is only getting started. Um, thank you so much. I would like to now welcome to the podium Monica Palacios, Director of the DC Office of Human Rights, to provide with some important information. Hola, So Monica is going to share with you a very important law that is coming up in Washington, D.C. This is critical for our business, and part of the role of the chamber is to partner with organizations like the Office of Human Rights to make sure you get the information firsthand. And Monica is so committed, Monica. If I, I mean, you're one of the most committed people I've ever met in really giving access to the Hispanic community and information. So thank you so much for believing in the chamber as well and for your support and commitment. Gracias, gracias. Buenas noches. Hola, no se me duerman, ¿ah? Mire, voy a hablar rapidito. Quiero que entiendan que nuestra oficina quiere colaborar y aprender con ustedes cómo comunicar de las leyes, de las, los derechos civiles que tenemos todos aquí en Washington. So I'm saying that we all have to collaborate and work together so everyone understands how important our civil rights are in Washington, D.C. So give me a cheer, civil rights, yes! Yes! Without our protections in the workplace, in renting a place to live, in going to get services that many of our people need. Without those protections, we are vulnerable and we're weak, okay? Together, we're stronger. So I want you to know that my office is here to serve you. Queremos trabajar con ustedes todos los negocios, todas las empresas de Washington para que entiendan las leyes y sepan cómo apoyar y, y enforzar las leyes porque sin las leyes, estamos todos vulnerables, okay? So thank you so much to Angela for her leadership. We're launching an initiative. Two important new laws have come through in the district. We have a new law protecting pregnant workers. So I want you to know that if you are an employer or an employee, you have to understand these new laws. We also have a new law protecting individuals who are returning from serving their time in prison. These individuals also deserve a fair chance to come back and be productive in our community. So if you have any questions about these laws, I'm here, my door is open. I want you to reach me directly. Quiero hablar con ustedes. Mi puerta está abierta. Cuando quieran nos, habla, nos encontramos y hablamos y trabajamos juntos, okay? So thank you very much, thank you. So on behalf of the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we would like to thank you for showing up tonight, and we would like to invite you to enjoy the rest of the evening, and don't forget to keep tweeting. You know, enjoy the rest of the evening, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here to our board members that are here, and the staff at the chamber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great night, and enjoy the rest of Hispanic heritage.